Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look back at Microsoft's swan song media player, the Zune HD. So come along for the ride. Released in 2009, the Zune HD was Microsoft's final attempt to dethrone the iPod. As the saying goes, leaves are most beautiful when they're about to die, and that holds true here. The sleek industrial design paired with a one-of-a-kind user interface makes the Zune HD a sight to behold. The bottom of the device is home to the headphone jack and the proprietary sync port, and on the left side, you'll find the media control key, as well as the message, hello, from Seattle. Finally, up on top is where the power button resides. The home screen is divided into two panels. One provides access to all of your content, and the other shows you your now playing, as well as your favorites, new content, or recently played content. The Zune HD is a music player first and foremost, and it does that job very well. The interface is text-based, as you can see here, and you slide through the categories left or right. You can use the jump lists to get right to what you need in no time at all. The Now Playing screen shows your album art, as well as a picture of the artist in the background. And if you leave it alone for long enough, it'll start a screensaver with text relating to your music sliding over the background image. The problem is, these days, some artists unfortunately don't have background images, and it really doesn't look as nice without them. If you're a fan of terrestrial radio, you'll be glad to know the HD FM tuner on the Zune HD is among the best I've ever used. Now onto web browsing. This really doesn't work anymore. Not only do most web pages refuse to even load, but the ones that do have major graphical errors. And while the camera doesn't really pick it up, the screen mysteriously flickers as you browse. In person, this is very noticeable and annoying. Trying to load Bing here actually crashed the entire device and I had to completely restart it. The marketplace has also ceased all functionality and shows up as having no items, and any of the social features have also stopped working, so this device is now mostly limited to offline tasks. That said, podcast fetching and syncing via the Zune software still works absolutely perfectly. Pictures are also a strong point here thanks to the gorgeous 3.2 inch 480 by 272 OLED display. Colors really pop and animations are buttery smooth. Having such a nice display also makes movies, both animated and live action, a joy to watch, as long as you don't mind the smaller screen size. Now it's no secret, apps were never a strong point for the Zune, even back in its day. Thankfully, you can still install the apps thanks to some tweaks on the PC side of things, but iOS, this is not. The only real AAA title available is Project Gotham Racing Ferrari Edition. The Zune HD is powered by an NVIDIA Tegra APX2600, and for those of you who don't know, this is the predecessor to the processor found in the Nintendo Switch. And this game really takes advantage of its GPU muscle. The graphics are smooth, and drop frames are nowhere to be seen. So should you buy one today, nine years later? This is the last generation of devices that were built expressly for the purpose of media playback, and if you need a capable offline media player, you'll be hard pressed to find anything quite as elegant as the Zune HD.